one of my mentors once said to me that, Femi, do you know, do you know the most res- important skill in life? I was like, no. He was like, it's resilience. But did you have a course on resilience when you were in school? Hello? Did anybody learn resilience when they were in school? No, nobody taught you how to be... How, nobody taught you that when you fall, you must rise again. The only place you probably hear those things are in church. But again, because in church, you're always looking at it from a spiritual perspective. You don't... It's, it's not always and practicalize it in everything you do on a daily basis. But the, the, the idea of continuous learning is critical to your success as an individual. So if you're a fashion designer or if you're a chef, you must understand that the skills that you used last month, there are people that are creating new things on a daily basis. You have to update your skills to ensure that you understand what is going on in your market and you don't become a, a baba that sells ago in the market and doesn't realize that people are now packaging their ago in nice you know, in nice containers with labels and also putting prescriptions on it. But he's just selling his own in the market. Very quickly, you find out that a new generation of people will come, they will package that same thing that the guy has been selling and never made money from, and they become millionaires. And you see them today. So all those guys who sell salads, you know, there's some woman that has been selling salad in Ogba for a long time, but she hasn't built more than one house. But the kids today are coming, they're packaging the salads, they deliver it to your office, I, do you see where this is going? The mentality that you need to succeed now is completely different from the mentality that you needed to succeed during our times. And one other thing that's also becoming more important in, in this generation is we call it the microwave generation. They want something, they want it now. In our days, when you wanted to make native for Ashwebi, you know, you will give the tailor three weeks or four weeks before and you pray that he doesn't even lose your material. Today, I can have a party tomorrow. There are guys that can call on my phone and they would have that native ready for me tomorrow. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? And that is exactly the way the expectation from leaders in the corporate world are. So we've now understood that we don't need to have the patience that we had when we were hiring people from universities 20 years ago. Now, we expect you to come in and be able to use a computer. I can't even be discussing that with you. I expect you to be able to use Microsoft Word, Excel, you know, basic things that you must be able to use. If they found you that you could use this, they will go and do Thanksgiving in church. But now, it's taken for granted. A lot of us have internet on our phones. In today's world, I want to know what you can do with the internet. It's not just about Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. It's what else can you do? Do you see the internet as a tool? Or do you see it as an entertainment tool? So do you see that somewhere you can find information? In my house, my kids call me Google. Because I'm like, oh, daddy, this, this, this. I was like, wait, I'll Google it. I can't be scattering my brain when that information is there. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. And guess what? I do it at work as well. So the kids in the office think I'm the smartest person in the world. I'm not. The reality is that what I do is I read. I'm always reading. Because that's the only way you're going to be able to update your, 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 your knowledge base. So like I said, let's talk about it. It's, you must be a lifelong learner. And the, the key characteristics for a la- of a lifelong learner is an insatiable knowledge seeker. You must always be looking for knowledge. You must read things that are outside of your natural, your, or, or of your career. You must. I'll tell you something interesting. When we moved back from South Africa, my wife had an opportunity to work with KPMG. Now, she doesn't, like, she doesn't watch TV. She actually doesn't watch TV. Um, and she has phones but she only uses it for WhatsApp. So she went for an interview with KPMG, and she had a fantastic interview, and then she got to the partner level. Last interview, and then the partner asked her, um, what do you think about the global economic crisis? This was 2008. And she just drew a blank. And she didn't get a job. And then when she got home, she was like, why did you never tell me about global? I was like, I'm always talking about it every day. I'm on CNBC every week talking about it, but you don't watch. I can't help you. Since then, now, she, she reads newspapers, even Linda KG and all of that, the relevant and irrelevant news. But the point is, if you don't have an insatiable quest for knowledge, the world is not ready for you, or you are not ready for the world. Because now, people expect you to grow in quantum leaps. They don't expect you to 
Oh, I learned A today. I can be patient and learn B tomorrow. Uh -uh. We want you to learn A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And even create your own. And if you don't, if you don't keep trying to learn, you will never be able to do that. The second bit is social learners. You have networks. So all of you have WhatsApp. What do you do with it? What are your WhatsApp groups? If you, if you check your WhatsApp groups and you see the number of groups you are on, and you look at the number of groups that you have never learned anything new from that group, delete it. They don't need you, and you don't need them. The point is your, your social networks are becoming even more important. So for people that are in, in, in social marketing, for example, when you go for an interview, the first thing they ask is, how many Twitter followers do you have? Why? Because people are beginning to realize that that is a platform through which you can communicate with a wider range of people. Am I communicating with you? So when we were growing up, television, for example, was what everybody was watching. I can't remember the last time I watched TV. I don't even have DSTV in my house. Why? Because now I can get information on demand. I can watch what I want to watch. I don't listen to radio. I have not listened to radio in five years. Why? Because I can now curate my own playlist. I can listen to what I want to listen to, and I don't have to listen to the fake accents of the Nigerians. You, you understand what I'm saying, though? That is the generation that you are in, and you must be able to excel within that generation. So, what are the 21st century skills that you require, the competencies you require? The one, first one is your core technical skills. I think that's very important you would understand that, and I'll talk about it very quickly. The second one is your learning and innovation skills. No employer wants to hire you to come and do what they were doing yesterday. Hello? Hello? Are you guys sleeping? Should we jog? Okay, please, I want it to be a bit interactive. No employer wants to hire you to come and do what they were doing yesterday. The point is, when I hire you, I want you to come with your own skills. I want you to come with your own experience. I want you to come with your own knowledge. And use that to better whatever it is that I'm doing. What is the point of me paying you a lot of money for you to come and do what we were doing before yesterday? Employers are looking for people that are innovative and people that are able to create. Um, number three in the broad categories is information, media, and technology. Like I was saying earlier on, the, it's, I wasn't making this up, actually. It's real. That the only, the only career that hasn't been threatened by artificial intelligence is investment banking. Everything else has been. Even doctors now, you know, in this, these days, you can, you can go on Google and enter a number of, um, what's it called, symptoms that you have. And it will give you a diagnosis that's as close to close as possible. Am I communicating with you? That is the world they are living in. And people are understanding that, that those things are important. And then the last is life and career skills. You know, employers are looking for a well-rounded person. The days of... Hiring, so when, when, I, when I remember when I used to work in, when I was working in ARM, we had something called steps and ladders. So for people that are still in, in, in those careers, you understand. So steps means that you are growing upwards, right? Ladders means that you are growing sideways. So the guys who are usually on the ladders are the guys who are technical, technically sound people. But the guys who are on the steps, those are the guys that are on their way to becoming MD. Right? Those are the guys that show a lot more than just technical skills. And, and those are the guys that thrive in an organization. And we'll talk about those skills very quickly. So your core technical skills. These are the fundamental skills that you require in a, as a 21st century employer or employee. Understanding the global environment has become very, very key. For people to understand that, look, now, in programming, for example, most of the programming is being done in India, right? Do you, for people that are in IT, you would understand that. That when you call a helpline in the U.S., there is a 90% chance that the person who is speaking the phone is in India. Hello? Even online, when you go to a help desk and you're chatting with someone, that guy's name is either Sandeep or Sanjit or something. Are you, are you following me? Now, the reason why things like that are happening is because the world is becoming a global place. You know, until the, the advent of the likes of Donald Trump and Brexit and all of that, globalization was the key thing that everybody was talking about. The reality is that as much as governments are trying to fight globalization, 
globalization is a reality. I don't know if you followed the news yesterday that there was a there was um, this worldwide protest yesterday on environment. Did anyone if you you saw it, you saw that? You the way those guys mobilized, they didn't do any adverts in newspaper. Are you communicating? There was no adverts in newspapers. They basically communicated via social media and there were thousands and millions of people all over the world protesting yesterday. That tells you that as the world has become more global, your, your benchmark has also become more global. So when you are competing for that job, you are no longer competing with Tunde, Wale, and Sheo, or Namdi. No. You are now competing with James from New York. You are competing with um, Frank from London. You are competing with Sanjit from India. Am I communicating with you? Which means that your standards now have to be global. You can't be thinking from a local point of view. So global awareness, we're saying you use 21st century skills to understand and address global issues. I am hiring you not because you are the smartest kid in the room. No. I am hiring you because you can solve the problem I am trying to solve. Do you understand me? Ah! For you to be able to learn to work, you know, in this 21st century, you must be able to collaborate. You know, Damilola works for KLM. He will tell you that within his network, he must know the guy that is in charge in Amsterdam, in London, in Quebec. Am I, am I making it up? You must, you must be able to communicate with those guys and understand that it's no longer Femi and Tolu or Femi and Tunde. No. The world is changing and employers are realizing that. In my job, for example, we are relating with international people like on a daily basis. They have their own idiosyncrasies. They have the way they think. They have the way they behave. And you must be able to relate with them. And you must be able to be productive in that kind of relationship. Now, second thing is, a lot of us grew up thinking finance was not our problem. Right? They lied. It's a lie. They lied to you. Everybody today is looking for someone who can manage finances. Because it's a scarce resource. It's not there all the time. So you think that my job is just sales. Nothing concerns me with finance. No. As a salesperson, you must be able to report your numbers. Abby? As a salesperson, you must be able to analyze the data that comes to you. To say, oh, Mr. Tune is my biggest customer. He buys 70% of my goods. So I should focus my attention more on him than... Um, Auntie Yetunde that only buys 2,000 naira and Awala is too much. She's calling my phone every time and saying my goods have not arrived. Do you understand what I'm saying? Financial analysis skills are becoming more important in the 21st century. And then another thing is every employer wants you to be an entrepreneur. You, you, I, don't, I don't want you coming to the business and thinking, Ogata, Ogata, Awala, Ruakwe, eh, really. Your salary will be delayed. I want you to come into the business thinking as an entrepreneur. Thinking that, okay, if this was my business, what would I do now? If this was my business, how would I react? How would I relate? I know that a lot of universities are now teaching entrepreneurship in Nigeria as well. Because people are beginning to understand that first, they are not jobs. We are not creating jobs fast enough for the number of graduates that we are churning out. Even though a lot of them are half-baked, with due respect to you guys. But the reality is that it is a problem. So the question is that if you cannot give them jobs, at least equip those people such that they can thrive on their own if they are creating their own business. Now, one other thing that's becoming important, believe it or not, is civic and health knowledge. The cost of people calling in sick in organizations, in a place like Nigeria, we don't have data, right? But in, in, in the U.S., except sick, sick days, was costing the U.S. economy $600 billion. The, and Nigeria's entire GDP is like 350 So America was wasting two times Nigeria's GDP on people calling in sick. So today, employers are also worried about the fact that they want their employees to be conscious about their health. Because a sick employee is a cost to a business. Am I communicating with you? So... The guy will just eat eba every day, eba, 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 eba. And they give him three wraps or four wraps. HR will start looking at you and saying, eh, 
This guy is a diabetic risk. And there's a cost to the organization. So organizations are beginning to focus more on that. In my office, for example, we have, I think, four, four times every year, we have health weeks. Where we basically will bring in a doctor, they will do blood tests, everything. They will watch your diet, they will check and all of those things. It's important. Because, again, it's not just physical health. There's also the mental health. You see in America that some guy will just come with a gun and kill people in his, in his workplace. In, in Nigeria, you know, until recently, we never even understood what it meant to be depressed. If you, if you tell somebody that you are depressed, they'll tell you, my friend, get away. Go on, or they tell you to go and pray if you're, if you're depressed. But the reality is that now we're beginning to realize that that is costing organizations a lot more than we all thought. Because a depressed employee is an unproductive employee. Am I communicating with you? So that becomes something you need to do. Second thing, we talked about learning and innovation skills. When I hire you, I don't want to be the person teaching you every day. I, I'll give you an example. We just finished appraisals at work. And I have this gentleman, extremely smart, great employee. So as part of his learning and development conversation, so I asked his supervisor that, what training can we send this guy on? You know what the guy said? The guy said, I don't want training. I want to learn on the job. And it was quite interesting because he understood that Learning on the job trumps any classwork training that you did. It's like a guy who's been learning how to fix cars in school. And then you now bring a mechanic that has been learning how to do mechanic work for 20 years. When that guy is still saying, okay, wait, let me go and consult the book and see whether... The mechanic comes in and says, ah, um, oil pump, oil shishe, oil pump, oil shishe. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? People are beginning to realize that an education is no longer a discriminating competence. In fact, Google, as I understand, no longer requires for you to be a graduate for you to be hired. Hello? So, you don't have to be a graduate. I'm not. But you understand what I'm saying? The world is changing. People are beginning to realize that the skills that are required to thrive in the workplace are not mechanical. There are things that you can learn as long as you put yourself or you make yourself open to learning. So, in terms of creativity, creativity and innovation, like I said, you must be able to think creatively. I, you know, um, there, there are all sorts of puzzles that people now use um, for interviews. So, when you come in for an interview, I'll give you a classic story. So, I have a friend, he's a crazy man. He was hiring a sales guy, and the guy came for an interview, and he left the guy in the reception for two and a half hours. And he was watching him on the CCTV. Was watching him on the CCTV. After two and a half hours, the guy, the guy had gone to meet the receptionist like four times. You know? And then after two and a half hours, he just packed his things and left. And of course, he didn't hire him. And then, so someone asked him that, why did you do that? He was shining it on our front. It was like, the guy is a marketer now. So he goes to somebody's office and the person is not around or the person has been away for a minute. And then he loses his temper and leaves. I can't hire that guy. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the guy did not care whether the guy had a first class or a third class or a master's degree. No, he was more focused on how would he behave in that kind of environment. And that's what employers are focused on. That's what they're looking for. You must be creative and you must be able to collaborate with others. I know that in schools they're doing that a lot now. Where even as a student you would have like work groups where they give you assignments together. All of you will go and work on the assignments and bring it and present. Right? That happens. In the workplace, it's not, even, it's not even something that we'll discuss. It is natural. It must happen. You must be able to work with other people. Um, we want you to be able to reason effectively. Um, you must be able to think out of the box. You must understand that there are 1,000 ways of doing the same thing. It's, and if one way doesn't work, you try another one. Um, your, your ability to make the right judgment is also becoming more important. How do you make your judgment calls? What do you rely on? Do you rely on data? Do you rely on information? Or do you rely on your, on your hunch? You know, there are human beings you meet and they say, you've met someone for the first time and they say, I don't like that guy. I don't like him. For people like me, our brains don't work that way because my, the question I ask is, why? See, my spirit just doesn't. What spirit? Which spirit? No, you can't. You can't in the 21st century judge a man just by a first 
interaction. You know, because if you do that, the tendency is that you will miss out on the big picture. And everybody in this century wants to focus on big pictures. Um, communication and collaboration, I don't even think we need to talk too much on that. If you can't communicate effectively, um, if your English is bad, if you mix your tenses, if you use was instead of is or hi instead of him, you know, or you mix up your pronouns, it's a problem in the 21st century because, again, as an, organi- as, 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 as an employee, you're most likely communicating with people in different environments, people in different organizations who would judge your organization based on the way you present yourself. Um, we grew up with the saying that um, dress the way you want to be addressed. I don't believe it, but it's true. Um, I hate to wear a tie. I haven't worn one in nine years. Um, I, apart from that picture, they forced me to wear a tie, that picture. I don't even know where they found it. But, but, but the point is, I know that because I don't wear a tie, I cannot allow any part of my dressing to be a talking point. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? I cannot, so when I, I always would wear a white shirt. Simply because I don't wear a tie. If I was wearing a tie, I would mix up my shirt. But not wearing a tie is a white shirt and a dark colored suit. What that does is, once you see me, you don't focus on my appearance. Your tendency is to focus on what I can do for you. Am I communicating with you? And that's not a technical skill. It's just part of the things that, uh, that you know, organizations are looking for. Um, information, media, and technology skills. Um, I think that, that speaks to itself. Um, in, in today's world, you know, I, was, I have a friend who's a pastor of a church. And they used to have, they have four locations. And he used to preach at each of those locations every Sunday. Are you following me? So there's one in Lekki, there's one in um, Sule, one in Yaba, and there's a third one, maybe VI or so. He will do morning first service, 6.30. He will preach there, jump inside his car as soon as it's finishing. He's going to VI. I just look at him and say, you will die. And you know what will happen the next Sunday? They will do service without you. But guess what he's doing now? He has one service where he preaches. Every other place, they stream. Are you following me? Again, the world is changing. The skill set that you require. So, for a guy who's doing that, suddenly, one of the skills they required in their church was a media manager. Because there must be somebody who can ensure that at each point, you know, those streamings are being delivered to the ultimate consumer. That is the 21st century, and you have to understand that you have to live and thrive in that. So, the first thing is, I want you to be able to access information, and I want you to be able to evaluate it. As, as, as an employee. So, I've given you a laptop, I've given you internet, it's not for you to browse and play solitaire all the time. I need for you to use it to make your job easier to work. They don't play solitaire anymore, Abby. I'm old, I'm old, sorry. You know, those computers we got those days, the first thing you saw on it was solitaire. You know, but you understand what I'm saying. I want you to be able to get information from whatever source and convert that information into a way that I can read and make a decision about it. So data is useless without you being able to convert it into information that can be processed and used. Um, And then I want you to be able to use and manage information, as I said. Um, Employees, employers want you to be able to take initiative. Um, You know, my... So we just got a new driver and I got into a major argument with my wife yesterday. She, She drove to... She went to do school runs and she drove herself. And I was like, why are you not using the driver? Why are you not using the driver? So after like five minutes of... She just said, look, I want peace of mind. And I just backed off. But the, the point is, and why? She says the driver doesn't take initiative. So they've driven to school five times. You know that at a particular time there's traffic on one route and there's no traffic. Come on. By the time you've driven the second time, you should understand the traffic patterns and use your initiative. You can't wait for your, employee or your employer to tell you or your supervisor to tell you everything every day. If I teach you how to fry an egg today, teach you how to fry an egg tomorrow. By the third day, I'm going to slap it into you. Because you must be able to pick it up. And what you do with your idle time then becomes more important. I always say to people that I don't expect my employees to work nine to five 
and be working every time. If you are the, the, any employee in my organization that is working till 11 o'clock every day, you know that that person is not working. Do you understand what I'm saying? You, that person is not being productive. So if you find out, you find out that during the day, the person was either gisting or on Facebook or on whatever it is. They're not being productive and that becomes important. Now, as much as employees want, employers want you to work um, as in teams, they also want you to be able to work individually. So you must be able to balance both of them. If you look at football teams these days, you know, everybody keeps talking about the creative midfielder, the creative midfielder, simply because whilst the creative midfielder can work part of it, as part of a team, you always need that one guy that can stand up and say, okay, you know what, we are winning this game today. A Ronaldo, a Messi, you know, Ozil when he was still a footballer. You know, you, you need those type of people that can take you and drag the entire team to achieve their goals. We don't like stars, but we understand the need for stars um, within organizations. I'm almost done. Um, productivity and accountability. You know, I do a lot of travel. I am barely at work. But I trust my team to deliver on what they need to deliver. Am I communicating with you? So whether the shepherd is around or not, the guys who are supposed to service the generator know they have to service the generator. I shouldn't be calling you to ask, have you responded to that email? And in, if, in, you know, if there is one major pet peeve that I have with employees, it's just responding to emails. That thing annoys me like I'm going to kill someone. On my phone, I never have more than five to ten unread emails. I have colleagues that have 6,000 unread emails. I cannot sleep with 6,000 unread emails. It's not possible. I'll have nightmares. But if, if you're not, so learn to be able to deal with things as soon as they come. As soon as they come to your desk, just push it, just push it along. Just push it along. Just push it along. If it gets to your desk and it stops, you earn a reputation. That, ah, Mr. Fermi's desk is a bus stop. Or is it, in fact, sometimes it might even be a bus terminal. So once it gets there, it just stops. It doesn't go up, it doesn't come down. You don't want to have that kind of reputation in an organization. And look, at the end of the day, the only reason why we hire you is for you to produce results. If an employee does not produce results, that employee is useless to the organization. And the, the more useless you are to the organization, the closer to the exit um, you get. You, I don't know if you saw, you saw this um, joke that was flying around last two weeks. Um, Emanuela and her uncle, the guy went to an interview and they were, they were moving him to the exit and then he called his family to tell them that he has got a new job. He'll be working at the exit. Um, the, the reality is that in a competitive environment, organizations are less tolerant of unproductive employees simply because there are many of you outside there that are looking for a job. I mean, some of the banks abuse that, really, that, that power simply with understanding that, look, if you don't want to do the job, you can leave, you know, because there's, there are millions of people out there waiting for you. But one of the things that I know, that even in the most unprofessional of organizations, when an employee performs and delivers, it's very difficult for those employees not to be rewarded. That's just standard. Because as annoying as Pogba is in Mayu, they still want him to play well because he's one of their best played players and he's one of their better players. Do, I don't know if I'm making sense to you. So the reality is that as you, as you go into the workplace and as you thrive in that workplace, it's extremely important for you to understand that your success is in your hands. If you have a boss that doesn't like you for any reason, and I, I've had that experience before in my career, where a boss doesn't like you, your work can speak for you. Am I communicating with you? If you, are, if, you are the, if you are the right employee, if you are giving your best, and if you're productive, your work can speak for you. So let's conclude. You know, previous generations, we grew up with our parents working in the same organization for 30 years. And if you, if you, if you, if you have parents that were as old as mine, um, you would understand what I'm saying. They worked in the same organization. They tell you, I joined Union Bank as a clerk in 1962 and I retired in 1985 
as a as an AGM or a GM. That doesn't happen anymore in this time. Because two things, the 21st century employee has different expectations. Their expectation is they are like birds. They perch, they eat whatever it is they can, and they move to the next tree. They, mo- they eat whatever it is they can, they move to the next tree. And organizations are starting to plan for you. So I recall that when I, when I started on my career, KPMG, for example, they struggled a lot with this. People would join KPMG once they got to about manager level, they left. It was standard. They left. And the organization used to scream, ah, we spent so much money training these guys and they're leaving. But after a while, they started to embrace it. They started to understand that, look, that's what we are as an organization. People are going to come learn and move on. Let's use those guys to our, for our own selfish interests. So you will come to a KPMG and work for seven, eight years. They will be happy when you are leaving. In fact, they will do a party for you. And immediately they will put you in their alumni group. Because they now realize that suddenly, 15% or 20% of the CFOs in the country are ex-KPMG people. So when they need to go and pitch for a job, they show up in the room and they say, Ah, it's that poor. How now? How are you? How are you doing that? Oh, it's you guys. Okay, don't worry. Don't worry. You've gotten the job. Do you understand? Employees are beginning to, employers are beginning to realize that you would understand that that becomes very important in this century. However, the reason why our parents could stay in those jobs for that long was also because the skills they required to thrive in those jobs were skills that were growing in a linear fashion. You know, you started with Windows, Windows 5. From Windows 5, you went to Windows 98 or Office 98. From Office 98, for another eight years, there was, two, there was no 2000, it was 2006. They did, so for them, they didn't have to learn in those hops and beeps. For you today, the, the iOS 12 is gone, it killed it yesterday. There's 13 this morning. It, I mean, just imagine for you that you are still trying to understand how 12 works. 12 months later, there's 13. And do you know what will happen? By this time next year, there will be 14. That's the way the world is. And our parents can't, we can't go into the workplace with the same mentality with which your your parents went into it. In fact, what would happen is they would fire you. So final slide for me is, what is key to your relevance as an employee on a go-forward basis? The first thing that is key for you is that you must be a consistent learner. I think we called it earlier on, what would you describe it as? I can hear you. You must be a lifelong learner. So, my, my final words to you are that you're competing not with the guy that's sitting beside you. You're competing with everybody else in the world. You cannot be a local champion. You can't be a Imba. You understand? You can't be winning Nigerian League every year. No, it's not working anymore. Now you must be able to compete in the Champions League. Even if you're never going to win it, but at least you must be there. They must invite you to that table. It's very important because increasingly, the world is going to get to that point. If you look at even Nigeria's GDP, for example, manufacturing doesn't contribute more than maybe 10 or 15% of our GDP. A lot of, our, a lot of the growth that you're seeing in the country is happening in ICT, it's happening in the finance, it's telecommunications. It's sectors that don't require a huge learning curve but they require you to be able to think smartly on your feet and for you to be able to be at the cutting edge. So this is it. I I always use this word um, in my my leadership writings that the leader of tomorrow must be willing to learn, unlearn, and relearn. And that is the challenge that you face in the 21st century. Thank you very much. I hope we all learned something. So if you have any questions, please just signify by raising your hands or you write it in a sheet of paper and hand it over to him. Questions, questions. please. Questions. While we're at it, um, we'd like to recognize um, Sister Biola Adekoya. Please drop your hands together for her. Questions. 
and Brother Sheyi Adebi. Please jam your hands together for her. Also, Sister Joke Jegede. Question. We'd also like to recognize the presence of our mothers and our fathers. You're welcome. So, any questions, please? You guys can't tell me you don't have any questions. That's not. Questions, please. Questions. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, sir. I want to appreciate you so much, sir. You have said a lot in summary. I want to appreciate you so much, sir. So much. But I have a question. Um, at my place of work currently, I actually have a challenge with the leadership style. Like, um, we have a lot of young, bright people around with a lot of skills, digital skills and the likes, but our hand tends not to listen to people. It just comes in with his ideas, this is it, and that is it. We don't have an open door policy where people could come in and just share things and and it gets me tired. I don't know what to do. And it's as if we don't understand the picture as I had. Everybody comes to work and we don't have an understanding of what we should do. Sometimes we don't know how proactive we should be because we don't understand the minds of the management at times. So it gets me tired. What should I do? Okay. Um, thank you, Brafem. You said so much. But my son is doing an internship with um, um, a skill management company, so to say. They manage athletes, musicians, and all whatnot. Okay, he came home to me one day and said, um, my company has a lot of young, very talented and skillful people, but there's this same problem with that office. The top hierarchy does not allow input from them. No matter what your idea is, it's like it's a closed top. Now, he asked me, what should I do? I'm getting disinterested. So, sir, what should he do? Uh, okay. That's the question. I, you know, I was going to say that if you people didn't have questions, I'm, I'll just pack my things and go home. That means that I haven't actually stimulated your brain. Good afternoon. My name is Esther Wandialo. You mentioned something about the graduate being half baked. You apologize to whose my question is whose fault is it? Is it the institution? Parents pay so much money to send their kids to the university. Some even pay millions in the private university. But they come out half baked. Is it the fault of the parents or is it the institution? I'm a lawyer, I'm a legal practitioner. There are things also, and um, the cost of the law school is serious. Let me use that adjective. But you come out, we have half-baked lawyers as well. Is it the institution? Is it the law school? Who do we blame? And a lawyer comes in, he knows practically nothing. They now say we should run conferences, what the law school will not teach. The things that the law school will not let you know. Who do we blame for these issues and lapses? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me, let me take those questions. So, the challenge you're facing is practical, is real. And there's no, there's no easy solution to it. There's none, actually. You know... One, I, I started writing about leadership and for people who follow me on LinkedIn please you can do that um, as I write about leadership and one of the things that I've been and as I'm writing about leadership I'm also attending a leadership as I, I have a mentor that mentors me on leadership and you know one of the fears that our generation has and when I speak about our generation I'm 43 so I, I don't represent my generation very well. But one of the challenges our generation has is that we're scared of being replaced by the younger ones. And you, you, need to, you need to respect that fear. You need to respect it. 
Think about it this way. I always say to people that our generation is the lost generation in Nigeria. We're the, we're the most unfortunate generation in the sense that the, the people just before us, so the guys in their 50s and their 60s, were economic leaders by the time they were in their 30s. So think about it. The owners of GTB, Access Bank, um, any bank you can think of, UBA, Tony Elumeli, all of those guys, they became leaders in their 20s. Fola and Tayo started GTB at 30 and 31. Um, Tony became MD of Crystal Bank at 28. Do you, do you see the trend, right? But our generation has to compete and fight amongst each other to get to the point where you become an ED or you become a director. So mentally, they come from a closed environment whereby the moment I give a younger person the, the platform to grow, they will phase me out very quickly. You know, and it's, a, it's about an organizational culture. So if the culture of an organization is the way you describe it, the reality is that Kilonuba Gomashi, you know, I say the second you load, can you be Peleba Baje, Kilorodo do Yoshi, there's nothing you can do. You have to find a way to thrive within that kind of culture. And this is the way to do it. If the, if the younger generation can work more collaboratively together, then they become more productive. So imagine if you have senior people and then you have 20 junior people who are able to put together a presentation and say, guys, this is our thought. If all 20 people showed up in a room and said, we have just thoughts that we want to share with you, please give us a minute. You know, the tendency is that they will listen. They will listen because they suddenly realize that the, the life of the organization is being threatened. Because if those junior people walk out without being fulfilled, they would leave. And because those junior people, as you would understand, they are smarter on their feet, they are, more, they are, they are not as experienced, but their they are, they are, they are experiences are more diverse. Those guys will thrive on their own. So that's why you are seeing that today, we are seeing a lot more startups but that are being championed by younger people. And that's why I described us as the lost generation. So if you, if you think about it, that today, there's, I think it was Barashegu Korode that posted something on Facebook and said, the kids who started some company, a better flutter wave or something, were in Covenant University in 2016. Am I correct? Can you remember that? Answer now. Do you people read? Those kids cannot understand our culture. Of telling them, when you come into an analyst program, you start as analyst one. Then after three years, if we like you, we'll make you analyst two. Then after four years, you become senior banking, I'll be ABO. Then after ABO, you become BO. Then after BO, you become, the kids are looking at you and thinking, about only you are okay. I want to be carrying managing director in three years. And that's what you're seeing. So what will happen is that those kids, are going to start their own business and they will run those people out of business. That, I, I, see, I'm not making a prediction. I'm telling you exactly what will happen. In another two, three years, you will get tired and you will pick your bag and leave and start up your own. And you will thrive. You will thrive because you can surround yourself with people that think in the same way with you. They are all young. They are all fresh with their ideas and they will grow. So you are seeing a lot of those disruptions in the bank. So, think about it. MCN just got a financial service license. The guy who's going to run that thing is less than 35. I don't, am I communicating with you? They understand. Those guys understand that if I don't give that boy an opportunity, he would leave and go and start his own. And he doesn't have the same constraints that I have as an MCN. The guy will go and hustle it into being. So, organizations that think that way, they are on a highway to retirement. They will go out of business. It's as simple as that. You cannot keep these 21st century kids the same way you kept us. You can't. The leaders need to understand that. And especially people in the banking industry are beginning to see it. And understand that those children are not going to spend more than five years with you. 
They want to become their own person. And, and, and that's what I will start to say to you to encourage the kids to start thinking about. If you are in an environment that is not allowing you to thrive, start to think out of the box. Your, your generation didn't wait. The guy who created Facebook was still in school when he did. They don't have patience for our own Kashishani uh, because for 30 years Toba Malo, Walo as assistant manager I have guys who have been in banks for 20 years that are still AM or manager These kids, they won't wait And you see, the challenge that we're having in the workplace, they also have it in church and they also have it at home That's the reality They're having the same problems they're having at work They're having it with mommy and daddy too that mommy and daddy have perspectives that are different from theirs. And they want to be able to express themselves. We have a responsibility to help them channel that energy into the right place. But if we try to suppress them as these guys are trying to do, they will break out. They don't have our patience. So I pray for your organizations, but I pray more for you to start your own thing. Okay? You can. You can. Sister, um... The problem, the problem is, is a big problem. It's a huge problem, actually. You know, it's a disaster. And that's the, that's the honest truth. It's a disaster. We, we are in a place whereby, and there's no logic to it. And so that, let me explain that. There's no logic. Because when the average Nigerian goes out of Nigeria, and they are put in environments that don't have the same type of restrictions. Is that what you guys are just talking about? When the average Nigerian goes out of Nigeria, they, 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 they blow up. They blow up. The, the reality is that the system is rigged against you. And it's deliberate. So don't get it twisted. It's deliberate. I, I, I didn't tweet about it because I, I did. I did tweet about it. But I couldn't be very direct about what I tweeted about. So I came out of a meeting in Abuja. That was the day Brashegun called me. I came out of a meeting. I was depressed. I was angry, depressed, and I, I was borderline violent. So I know when I got to the airport and they told me my flight was delayed, I just bust the vessel like there was no tomorrow. But this is what happened. There was a director from... ICRC in a meeting that I took and the guy made certain statements that left me angry how's the guy left me very angry I, I did tell him off because he doesn't pay my bills and he doesn't feed me and I told him I said with people like you in government there's no hope for Nigeria and I'll tell you what he said so they've been, we've been working on a transaction with them a transaction that would have been transformational would have changed a lot of things in the country and they shut it down you've seen this story about P and ID the 9.8 billion dollars right so we took them to arbitration they are owing my clients about 30 billion now and the guy was like you know you people self what were you thinking nobody does business with government 18 months before election so because you don't know the new government is not compelled to follow through with what you did so I, 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 he said it the first time. I'm like, Alaji, you didn't just say that. He's like, but it's the truth. I was like, you know what the problem is with what you just said? Is that you are a policymaker. And you decide what happens for my children. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, it's just there's something wrong with that. You are the one building infrastructure that my children are going to use. And you have this mindset. And that's the problem, with our, that's the problem that we're having as a country. In the sense that we're not preparing our kids for the 21st century. The average lecturer in the universities, they don't have laptops. When I did my MBA in Uniben, the guy who taught us ICT, well, he had a desktop, one old rugged desktop in his house. That there was only one woman that could operate it. No, I'm not kidding with, I'm not kidding you. There was just one lady that was there. He had one secretary that used to operate it. So when you go and use it, the woman would be asking you, so what do you want to type? And she'd type it. I, got, I scored 98% in that course. I didn't do nothing, nothing, nothing remotely connected to that computer. The only computer that guy taught us 
was that one 15 minutes that I spent with that woman in that office. Now, and that's the problem we have as employers today. So, guys come out of school. Now, sadly, you mentioned private universities. I, I don't think the problem is as prevalent as you think it is in the private universities. So, there is something happening in today's world where certain schools are suddenly becoming isolated from the rest of the system. So, sorry, if you didn't go to these schools I'm about to mention, it's not my fault. So, if you didn't go to Unilag, Uniben, UI, um, did you call Lasso? Please stand up on your chair and raise up your hands if you call Lasso. Uniben, um, Illori, University of Illori, and Ife, and Ibado. The chances that you will, that your degree will be recognized in a workplace is a bit low. Now, the private universities are raising the bar. So, Covenant University, very, very good graduates. Babcock have very good graduates. Um, Afer Babalala has very good graduates. So, there are a couple of universities that are setting themselves apart. Now, the problem is that how many parents can afford to take their kids there? So, how do employers solve that problem? We are solving it. Don't get it twisted. We understand that when that guy comes out of university that is useless, we appreciate it. What we're then doing is we're, we're retraining them. So if you look at the banks, for example, Access Bank, GT Bank, all of those guys, they have training schools. So your first six months when you come out of school is to train you. No, I'll, I'll make you laugh before I go and sit down. My cousin is late now, God bless his soul. He, he studied accounting from um, Ado. You're not in Ado. Me and I'm an accountant. So he was living with me after I finished. So one day we're talking, I was like, ah, Mobile Kuba Mr. Bank reconciliation statement. And the guy drew blank. He just drew blank. And I was like, You don't know bank reconciliation statement. Ah. It was like Edmo, ah, I don't can we can pass me. I, I promise you, I'm not making this up. He came out with a 2-1 in accounting from UNAD. And he couldn't prepare it. He didn't know, not like he couldn't prepare it. He didn't know what a bank reconciliation statement is. Now, the, the challenge is, as parents, now, how do you fix that for your child? Because that's what you need to do. You need to fix it for your child. It's the child that needs to fix it. So, one of the things that's happening now is you have tools that we didn't have. You have the internet. You have the internet. I got kicked out of Unilag because I challenged um, Professor Omolewa, Eddie Omolewa, because I challenged him in class. Do you understand what I'm saying? But simply because at the time when Eddie was teaching me accounting 101, I was a qualified chartered accountant. And he was teaching rubbish, and as I said, what you're teaching is rubbish. And of course, he kicked me out of the class. But the point is, our kids need to understand exactly what I said earlier on. That is about continuous learning. You have the internet. There's so much resource on that internet, aside from Linda KG and Instagram, that you can use to develop yourself. And that's what, that's how you can set yourself apart. Another thing I believe that the youth fellowship can do. Again, you guys need to help. On a day like this, I kept telling Shegun when he told me to come. I said, I'm going to be flying back because of this event. Your children had better come. You know, your children had better come, otherwise you will pay for my ticket. The point is, platforms like this provide an avenue for you to upskill and update your knowledge. The, the challenge is that you won't come. I, I was saying to my wife this morning that if this was a prayer meeting, that this room would be full. I'm serious. I told her, I said if this was a prayer meeting, that the room would be full. But I, I took a bet with her that we would not have half the, the hall. Ladies, gentlemen, just hear me out so, as I round up. Your future is in your own hands. This place that we live in, they don't owe you anything. 
You don't count. You are not a cow. It's only cows that count here. You don't count. However, you can build yourself into what you want to be. And that challenge is yours. Every opportunity you have like this, seize it with both hands. Because it's your life, not mine. And not your parents. Me, I have children. If God spares my life, I will see them till they get married and have their own children. But otherwise, my father, Sister Koki, you remember my father. My father kept saying, the only legacy I have to give you is an education. We didn't understand what he was saying. When Baba Ojo died, we found out that he didn't have any money left. He has spent everything. Everybody, you, I'm serious. We, had, we, didn't, we, we used our own money to bury him, not his own money. So the point is, if you've been given the privilege of an education, seize it with both hands. Don't wait until your lecturer teaches you something. Go on the internet and learn yourself. You know, Deji Ali used to say something to me when I was in ARM. He said that the only thing that you can take out of, your A- of ARM is your experience. And I'm still benefiting from that advice. So I'm telling you exactly the same thing. The only thing that you can take out of every day is what you learn. Even when you leave an organization, they can't remove it from you. They can collect their laptop back, but they cannot collect your knowledge. God bless you. Okay, so to save time, we will be having our Q&A session during the, um, the panel session. So um, I would like to introduce our next speaker, who will be taking us on skill and knowledge gaps in business and career, behavioral competence, Ms. Abiola Adekoya. Ms. Abiola Adekoya is a financial expert with over 18 years' experience working with leading financial service firms whose activities span across various continents. She is currently the MD CEO of RMB Nigerian Stockbrokers a subsidiary of the First Rand Group, a leading financial service group in Africa with footprints across the globe. The RMBNS is focused on providing leading equity brokerage service, trading and research to, dem- to, domestic, and, um, to domestic and international investors for the Nigerian equities market. Abiola holds a BSc economics degree from University of Lagos and she started her career with the, with the then Chartered Bank Limited, now Stambik High BTC PLC. She is an alumnus of the prestigious Lagos Business School for her MBA. She is also a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers of Nigeria. Prior to this role, she was the MD of FDN Securities, a subsidiary of the First Bank of Nigerian Holdings PLC, where she successfully repositioned the business to a top five stockbroking firm. She has considerable experience in equity capital market transactions and has been involved in several deals, including initial public offers, rights issues, special statements, and offer for sale, which spans across various sectors, including banking, construction, and consumers. Please jam your hands together as we welcome Abiola Adekoya. Good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. How you all doing? Uh, everybody get up. What's that? Oh, yeah, yeah, get up. Uh-uh. Hey, yeah, shake your body, shake your body, shake your body. Is it, what did they do? Is it best? What's that thing that they do? What's that? Uh, hey, everybody, one, do one best. Oh, yeah, everybody. Come on. Uh, are you too old? I thought I was in the youth church. Am I in DCM? Am I in main church? Oh, you are better now. Don't you better in party? Then you can't better for God. Okay, everybody say hallelujah. Amen. Okay, you can all sit down. You've all been sitting for a long time, so I just thought it was important to get some energy going in the room. Yeah? First of all, I'd like to say thank you to the leadership of Youth Fellowship for this um, amazing initiative. I think that it is so important that um, churches get in front of conversations that are critical and that would impact success for its members. So Youth Fellowship, um, um, the leadership would like to say a big thank you to you. Can you give them a round of applause? Please. It is not easy to put things like this together. And also the organizers of the event, can we just give them a round of applause as well? 
And most importantly to yourself for taking your own Saturday to be here. Please shout, woo! Exactly. Because it is definitely not easy to be here on a Saturday. You've been at work all week. You can stay at home. You can sleep. You probably have clothes to wash and, you know, food to cook. But you're here trying to feed your mind and your soul to be better. And that is the most important thing. So I'm going to start by, first of all, asking people. When you look at yourself now, do you have an image of who you want to be in five or ten years' time? Who has an image of who they want to be in five or ten years' time? Can I get a show of hands? Right. Because, you know, it is very important to know who you want to be. Because who you want to be, it starts from now. It doesn't start from then. You can't say, oh, I want to be B or C. But I will wait until I get there to start it. You can't start from there. Now, let's go to the Bible a bit. Because we are in church. And because we are Christians, so we can use the Bible. So nobody's going to harass me and say, oh, but I'm a Muslim. We are all Christians. Do you remember the story of um, Jacob and um, his um, father-in-law? Right? Who remembers that story? You remember when Jacob separated the, the, the sheep, the cattle? And you remember that he used to make the cattle look into the water with the spots so that they could be spotted. Do you know what Jacob was doing? You know, when you look at something, you become that thing. So the more they looked at it, it sounds spiritual because you think it was, but that's life. The more you look at something and you aspire to something, what do you do? You become that thing you aspire to. Does that make any sense? So the first thing I'm going to tell all of us to do is first of all, write down. How many people have books and pencils here? Books and papers. Who brought their books? Okay, great. I'll give you 30 seconds. Write down the image of who you want to be in the next 10 years. Write it down. Write it down. And I want you to write it down in terms of values. Because we're talking about behavioral competence, right? So what kind of values do you want to espouse? Is it integrity? Is it honesty? Right? Is it assertiveness? Do you want to be analytical? What values do you want to espouse? Do you want to be passionate? Do you want to be creative? Do you want to be innovative? Write the values you want to espouse. Write it down. Do you want to be the person where if somebody says, I want to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, can they call on you? Please write it down. Because we cannot continue this exercise or this conversation if I don't know who you want to be. And I'm going to ask people to share who they want to be with me. And it, it would help even better if you have an image of the kind of person you want to be. Please write their name down. I don't want you to have images like, no offense, I mean, I, I love certain people, but please, let's put images down and let's put the image of, and, and espouse their values. Let me pick someone that is popular. Let me pick Beyonce, for example. You may not like her music, but you cannot deny that she's a super hardworking woman. You cannot deny that she is a very committed woman. You cannot deny she's a very diligent woman because she practices how many hours a day for the song she's going to sing. Is that not right? So it doesn't, what you're, I'm picking from her is not what she wears. What I'm picking from her is the value she espouses. Does that make any sense? So who wants to share with me what they've written down? Does anybody want to share with me? Don't be shy. I want someone to share with me. If we're going to move forward in this matter, we have to be engaging one another. So you can't be, you cannot not share with me. Who wants to share? I will call somebody. Else. Okay, can you have me look at that, that gentleman wearing waistcoat, the one in white? He looks like someone that I wrote a lot. <laughs> Since you refuse to talk, I'm going to call people. Please introduce yourself, your name, because again, this is also a networking opportunity. So. Introduce yourself, your name, what you do, and then the, the image you want to be. All right. Good, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Michael. I am a fret forwarder. You're what? Um, a fret forwarder. A fret forwarder. So, guys, if you want right. to play your cards, if you want, if you bring in something from anywhere in the country or anywhere in the world, this is the man you have to call now. So, we're networking now. I'm going to collect your number. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Uh-huh. Um, I'm projecting, like, in the next 10 years, presently I'm having a fame that I'm trying to build up 
my personal film. Okay. In the next year, I want to have conjunction with Nimasa and work with the Nigerian Port Authority. Okay, what values do you want to, do you need for that role? Tell me the values. Like, I don't understand the question. Do you want to have integrity? Do you want to be honest? Do you want to be yeah, hardworking? Yeah, do you yeah, want to be yeah. shady? Do you want, want to be to corrupt? Be honest, no, no, no. Okay. Honesty and integrity. Okay. Raising people right to do Good. the right thing Good. at the right time. Good, that's fantastic. Do you want to share? Okay, please don't mean me. That's my sister, so let me, for caveat. <laughs> okay, please share. Hello, everyone. Good to be back here. Okay, so... Your um, name. <laughs> I want you to... My name is Tolu Akinkoye, and I'm a private banker. I work with Sterling Bank. I'm having a great time. I um, learned so much from Femi's conversation, and I think that's great. So for me, um, one of the things that, or the core values that I've had in my head, I want to be dependable. I want to be amendable. Um, I want to be a helper of people because I love people. Um, each day, each time, I want to um, be innovative and creative. Um, and I would also, I have adopted the values of learning, unlearning, and relearning. Thank you very much. I thought somebody else raised up their hand. Yes. Thank you so very much. Okay, my name is Esther Wanjalo. So in the next I know you're a lawyer, Esther. You spoke earlier, right? Yes. yes please. In the next ten years, I would like to be like someone, a mentor to me, Mrs. Abimbola Akiridolu, S.A.N. Fantastic. She's a senior advocate of Nigeria. She's yes. an authority in admini ab administration of justice system, Fantastic. criminal just um, justice system. She's an authority in alternate dispute resolution, um, resolution because people are moving away from litigation right now. She is incorruptible. She is firm. You cannot um, rob her. She knows her rights as a lawyer. So in the next 10 years, in the next 10 years, with all my cases together, I want to stand with the silk gown um, like another Abimbola Akiri Dulu. Fantastic. Thank you. Please give everybody a round of applause. Please. It's not easy. People did open, raise up your hand. I'll clap for them. Uh -huh, thank you. You cannot, uh, if you cannot do put that, you will not clap. I don't like that kind of behavior. I don't like what I hate. So, what, you, what was consistent in everything these three people have said? I love, what's your name, sorry? I love what Michael said. Michael said, I want to own a firm in 10 years. You see, when you have an idea of what you want and where you want to go to, it makes your journey easier. Michael said, I want to have integrity. I want to be honest. You know, Tolu said, I want to learn and relearn and unlearn. What's your name, sorry? Esther said that, she, Esther mentioned the name of a person. You know why I love Esther Zone the most? Esther even talked about the kind of knowledge she wants to acquire to be that woman. She said the woman is an authority in dispute resolution, in arbitration, and I want to be like that. She even went as far as saying that from what I gathered from Esther, Esther even wants to be a son, if I'm not mistaken. Now, it is clear. You know why it's important to have an image of what you want to be? Esther wants to be a son. Do you think Esther will fight on the road with an Okada man? Co possible. She can't. Because where she is going to, not now in the age of social media where people have pictures, imagine someone takes a picture of Esther fighting on the Okada man. Then they now bring her name up for son. Because that's where we are going to in the world. If you look at the, what's happening to the Canadian president, Trudeau, a picture that he took when he was how old? He's coming up and he's about to disturb his entire career. So if somebody takes Esther's picture now and see her fighting on a cover man, do you think she can be a son in 10 years' time? It's not possible. In Nigeria, you may think he won't catch up to, with us, but he will catch up. We're going to get there. Why is it important to have an image of what you want to be? Because the behavior starts when? It starts when? It starts when? It is important to start now. What image do you have for yourself? I can't give you that image. You need to create that image for yourself. I, can, I have an image of what I want to be. You have what you want to be. Michael has said, I want, to be, I want to own my own firm. There are certain qualities that you need for that. But I cannot give you an image. You give yourself an image. 
once you have the image that you have for yourself, it starts now. So what can you do to get, to get, your, you, to get your image going? The first thing is to assess yourself. Who are you? What kind of person are you? What kind of person do you need to become to be who you are? To be who you want to be? Now, is there a gap? Usually there will be a gap. Who am I now? I work for somebody. I come late to work. When they give me work to do, I don't do it on time. When they, my boss talks to me, I talk back at him. If he says I'm stupid, I tell him he too must be stupid. Right? If they are gossiping, I will be the one that's reading the gossip. If the gossip is finished, I will be the one that scatters the gossip to everybody. Is that the behavior of a leader in the future? Does that, is that the kind of boss you want to be? Because we have to be clear. You cannot, the behavior you have today is not going to change if you are a boss. I mean, I believe one thing. People don't change, they, they get PhD and master's degree, they don't change their behavior. You become, if you become a professor in that bad behavior. If you were late all the time in your boss's job, when you have your own company, you will be late and you will miss your deals. Fact. It is not, it is not a lie. You will be late. Because you cannot give what you don't have. So the first step is, who are you now? Be honest. Take a cold look at yourself. Be very cold. Take a cold look. Who am I? Am I organized? Do I, do I speak properly? You know, am I dependable? Am I hardworking? How do I take feedback and criticism? Who am I? So remember we said the first thing is your image. The second thing is who are you? Who am I? Be honest. Cold, hard facts. And if you want to know, ask your friends. They will tell you. Your friends, if the good friends, they don't have the ones that will be rubbing your back and lying to you, put paper in their mouth and be blowing your eye. Ask your friends. The ones that hate you, why do they hate you? Be bold. Why do you hate me? What don't you like about me? You know why? Because in, in, in people hating you, there is wisdom. There is wisdom when people hate you. There is a reason. People just don't hate people because I hate her for her dress she's wearing. It may be how you wear the dress. Or they just hate you, Shah. People just hate for no reason. But I'm just saying, but ask them, be bold. Ask your boss, what do you think of me? Am I a good worker? Do you like me? If you have a project, why don't you give it to me? Why do you give it to um, Yemi? Why don't you give it to me? What have I done wrong? Be bold. Ask people, who am I? Ask your mother and your father. When you do that and you can see that, then you now look at yourself and say, okay, who am I now? And the person I need to be, who, what qualities do I need? Is there a gap? If there is a gap, you need to fix it. What did I say? You need to fix the what? Fix the gap. There is no leader that doesn't have a gap. There is none. Every leader has a gap. I have my gaps. I'm sure Femi has his gaps. We all have our gaps. But when you know your gap, you find a way to reduce the impact of your gap on your, on your, on your success. Because you cannot succeed. Let me tell you something there. If God loves you, your gap will make you fail when you are small. Sure you know. If God loves you, he will, he will let your disgrace from your gap when you are nobody. So that thing will just die. It will not be a national headline. But if you, God has been warning and, and you don't fix that gap, when is now time to be sand? Sorry, Esther, not you. Somebody else. Another enemy. They will now use that gap against you. And say, ah, this person, no. Then at the national level, you are now fully disgraced. Because you didn't fix a gap that you could have fixed when? When did research fix the gap? I can't hear you. Fix the gap now. Who am I? Who do I want to be? I need to fix the gap. Take a cold, hard look. You cannot be successful with bad behavior. I, I don't care who you are. I, 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 I don't care who you are. Bad behavior cannot take you far. It, you will not see. You will get to the top, of, but if it is remaining small, 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 eh, small, for them to just give you the the golden what is it? I don't know what golden whatever the golden key to the golden treasury, you will just drop because you didn't fix the gap. So fix the gap when fix the gap now. It is very important to have the right attitude. Why is it also important to have the right attitude? And how can you have the right attitude? You've all done the first step, which is to have an image. The second thing is to identify people that you want to look up to. You've done that. The third thing is to probably ask yourself, can I find mentors? I don't know if Femi, Femi probably touched on that. But who around me can I latch onto that can help me to mold my behavior? Maybe Esther Kango, I mean Mrs. Akere Dolu. 
She probably can't because maybe Mrs. Akere Dolu is senior. But are there Mrs. Akere Dolus that are around her that she can leverage on? I have people like that. Now, we're growing up in a time when, luckily or unluckily, the access to mentors is so, I would say, very available. When I was growing up, my mentor was my mom. My mom was a banker. And she worked and she had four children. And I had aunties who were bankers. And, they, you know, they were also, I saw the quality of who they were. And I saw the work that they did. And I wanted to be like them. So, without the internet, I had mentors around me. I was blessed. But now you have people that have mentors. You can see your mentors online. You can go on Instagram, on LinkedIn. You can go many places. And you can find mentors in those places. So find a mentor. You don't have to be someone you talk to. You can be someone that you look at from afar. I like Michelle Obama, for example. She's one of my mentors. I look up to her. Why? Have you tried being a black person in America and have no scandal? Do you know any black person that is successful in America that has little or no scandal? Can you count them? That woman was in the White House for eight years. Eight. They did not find a picture of her naked anywhere. No mistaken video, mobile video of her fighting or slapping somebody anywhere. And they looked. You know they looked because they had to bring them down. But they did not find one single thing. That says a lot about her. And the journey of her, it didn't start when she met Barack. It started before she met Barack Obama. So it means that she, from the get-go, she knew that perhaps I could be somewhere high in life. I don't want anything to disgrace me. So I look up to her. So find mentors. Find mentors. What did I say? Fantastic. The other thing I'm going to also say is, let me now take you to the organization. You know, as an employee, it's very easy to just feel like you don't have power. Who feels powerless as an employee? How many employees feel powerless? Let me see a show of hands. How many, do, do you have any people that work in firms and feel like they don't have any power in the company? Nobody. Everybody is powerful in their company. And people are all of that. And I want to see your hands up. Who feels powerless? Like I can't do anything. I can't influence change. Nobody can. You do, right? Because when you enter an organization, probably at an entry level, you don't have, which power do you have? In fact, I make a joke that if you, if I hire you as an entry level, you must refund them. If I am paying you, you must refund my money back. Because I'm hiring you, you don't know anything. I'm training you for everything. You need to pay me, Abby. I need to pay me. I'm trying for you. I'll teach you how to type, teach you how to talk, teach you how to walk, teach you how to write. Ah, uh-uh. Baba, pay me money. Because guess what? You don't know anything. You're coming from school. You're fresh. So as an employee, you can come into a job. And you feel like, I don't have power. But you know what? You have more power than you realize. In fact, you are so powerful. You can't, I can't even, I wish I could tell you the power you had. You have power to change an organization. You have power to change yourself. You have power to change even your bosses. Do you think so? When you come into an organization, I believe in something called entrepreneur. Everybody say entrepreneur. If somebody is sitting beside you, please just give them one elbow like this. Just give them one elbow. Entrepreneur. Why do I use the word intra? Because in, the, in Nigeria now, we all hear, oh, entrepreneur, I want to own my own business. We all can't own our business. Let's be practical. Who will run our other, who will run the one that we are building? We all can't own businesses. Is that, is, is that a lie? We all can't own businesses. Some people will run, this, run the business for us. In fact, some people derive joy in running businesses for us. Some people, I have a, there's, a, my, there's someone I know, a makeup artist that I know. And I told her, you're so good. Why don't you go and start a makeup plan? She said, I don't want to. She said, I love working for Tara. In fact, I help Tara develop products that she can sell to people. That's what she does for Tara. She helps Tara develop brands and products that she can sell. Because she loves it. I don't want to own any business. It's people like that. It's not compulsory. So an entrepreneur is someone that looks at the business and says, okay, I like the values of this business. I like the trajectory of this business. I am going to put in everything I need to make this business grow within my power. That's what an entrepreneur is. And it means that if, you, like if you're an entry-level person and you walk into a company and they told you, oh, the company is owned by Michael, and Michael says, I want to be the best freight forwarding company in Nigeria, and as you're walking into the company, you're strolling in, and then you now see one dustbin there by the entrance that is now full. Ah, you'd be like, No. Mr. Michael says he wants to be the best freight forwarding company in Nigeria. 
That is not the image that he wants at the door of his, of his company. So you will go and say, Cleaner, can I, can I see you? Please, can you make sure we don't see any trash can in this place anymore? That's an entrepreneur. It means that you're, you're not just focused on, ah, let me just do my own and collect my salary and go. I don't even have time for any kind of rubbish. I don't even have time. That's, not in, that's, that's, that's bad behavior. It means that end to end, you, are in, you, you think about the business. It means that if you have a family member that is wanting to bring in a car, you say, oh, I, my company can do it for you. We can give you a good rate. It means that you take pride in the success of the company. And that is so important. You must take pride in the success of your company. Otherwise, then leave the company and go home. Example that they are going to work and they are wishing their company is evil. How? It happens. Is it a lie? Am I lying? I'm not lying. People go to work and wish their company is evil. They say, oh, I'm my boss. Mm, in fact, I'm wishing him evil low. Ah, he will not even succeed. But is that going to help you out? Because the Bible say, Irorun Gini, Irorun Kinyo. Uh-huh. So take it back, walk in the market and say, yeah. Oh, my God. So, hello. You must make sure that your company is doing well. It's important. So you must see the company as your company. You must value the company as your company. I'm going to touch on something very, very important. There was a question that was asked of Femi. And it's funny, I'm doing a series on my Instagram page called Managing Your Boss. Everybody say Managing Your Boss. You know why I didn't say leader, manage your direct report? Because we always focus on leadership. Oh, a leader must be this. Oh, a leader must be that. Yes, a leader must be a, this, A, B, C, D, must be perfect. But guess what? A leader is, a, what, is what, first of all? A human being. It means that a leader is what? Is not infallible. A leader will make mistakes. A leader is not always perfect. A leader has pressures like you. They are married or they have children. They have family issues. They need money. They are like you. The same traffic you all go through. The leader goes through it. Abi, is it a lie? Is it not a, it's not a lie. Managing your boss. I call it managing your boss. And I want to share parts of it with you. Because I want us to change our perspective. What did I say? Change our what? Change our what? I want us to change our perspective. Because if you change your perspective, you will see life very differently and you will succeed very quickly. The reason why a lot of us are not successful is because we have a victim mentality. What did I call it? What did I call it? We blame everybody else but ourselves. We hold everybody responsible but ourselves. We tell ourselves a lie that the reason why I'm not succeeding is because my boss doesn't like me. Or, we say, my father's family is following me. You know, we're in CNN, so, you know, I'm going to, you know, break some tables. Because we will say, Ogu e shuni. Ah, one tell me, dile, baba, baba, ya, ya, mini. Ah, one auntie, me, kato, unro, 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 It's possible. But guess what? That's why we have the blood of what? Blood of what? What did you say? At the name of Jesus, every nation what? Every tongue shall come. Exactly. So guess what? Ogunti shaking you. Cancel, cancel. So we went to do church briefly. Church last year. So Ogunti shaking you. Cancel. So don't tell you. No. Well, don't tell you. You are following your what? Yourself. As Femi said one time, he will do, he, he will do. Eh, eh. He will not share. I tell you, share. So, I'm going to tell you. Change your purse. Perspective. The elephant is huge. If you are in front of the elephant, what will you touch? Eh? You must, I walk around though. You, who, if I'm in front of the elephant, who do you, who do you, eh? What do you touch in front of the elephant? At the back, what do you touch? Eh, at the side, what do you touch? At the front, what do you touch? In the middle, what do you touch? What is the thing? Does it change? But are you arguing with yourself that it's different? Yes. Because you say, ah, because the elephant is called. Ah, it's an elephant. elephant. But is it what? It's an elephant. Perspective is about looking at another angle away from yours. It is not always what it seems. Your boss is not a witch. She may have had a horrible experience in life. Her background may be faulty. Her husband may be maltreating her. 
or his wife may not be treating him well. Maybe he has a troubled child. You don't even know, but change your what? Perspective. Change your perspective. Be the kind of employee that no matter where you work, right? People are happy to call you. Change your what? How do you change your perspective? If you work with a, if you work, who works in a company that, that is very report driven? Who, who works in a company that is report driven? And they need to do analysis, reports, financial, you do? If your boss says, what's your name, sorry? Mabel. If your boss says, Mabel, give me the report for XYZ, and you make an error, and you give it to your boss, and he goes into a meeting, and he submits your report, and somebody says, oh, this report, there's an error here. And, you come, and then the guy, obviously, your boss, you don't know that. But your boss comes to meet you and yells at you. How will you feel? How will you feel? You will feel bad. But how does your boss feel in front of his peers? He looks like a fool. Your boss looks like a what? Like a fool. Because he trusted Mabel to do a report. And Mabel is supposed to do an accurate report. And what did Mabel do? Mabel made a what? An error. So, if you know that your boss's job is about consistency, accuracy in data, do you, do you have any opportunity to make errors? You don't have. Do you have? You don't have. For example, you're a lawyer, and they rely on you to give an opinion on the case. And your boss tells you, Esther, take a stab at it. And then you do it, and then you quote the wrong law. And your boss relies on you, and goes to a meeting and mentions, oh, I have this report. And then someone says, oh, but this is the wrong law. This law was changed in 2017. When you are quoting in 2014, how is your boss going to look like? Like a fool. He's a fool. I had a direct report in my office where he reported into me. And I'm in the trading world. And I told the guy, I said, listen to me. We trade. Where I'm in investment. I'm in stockbroking. The markets open at 9.30. But our clients get to work at 7 o'clock. So we must be at work by 7. I said, you see, I give you grace. You see, once it's 2.30, if at 3.30, carry your bag and go home. I said, if they see you on the road, tell them it's me that told you to go home. But you see, if you're not in this office by 9, there's a problem between me and you. Because guess what? Our job requires we must get to work early. You must get to work early. Your boss is not wicked. That's just common sense. Is, it, is your boss wicked? If we start looking at things with cold, hard facts, Right? And stop being emotional. Nigerians are what? Emotional. Ah, we're too emotional. If, if you ask people what's wrong with their boss, ah, okay, me okay, petty, me. Oh, petty. Ah, oh, petty. Oh, petty, because they like me at all. Ah, okay, man, sorry, see me anyhow. Listen, if your boss talks to you anyhow, it's okay. Find, you see, your bad will say, I, mean, I, I said a lot of your bad proverbs, so don't be upset. One is, okay, okay, why will you kill us? not shaking you. Uh-huh. Two mad people cannot be in the same ship. So what happens if your boss doesn't have if your boss is rude to you? You don't attack your boss at that point. You keep quiet. You see, but you will wait. One day in the morning, you find the time. You know your boss, you know what time works. You say, Boss, you know, I really appreciate you. You may think I can't do it, but me I can do it. And you know you know why it's important? Because you also where you're going to in future, remember what we said? You want to be someone that is assertive, someone that can stand their own. And it starts from now. You say, boss, I really like you a lot. I've learned a lot from you. I think you're an amazing person. But, you know, I want to know how can I, you know, do better with you so that you don't shout at me at work. How can I support you? In what area? Do you think if I do your report a day before, would that help you out? You know, your boss will be shocked, first of all. You know, you'll be like, okay. Why will your boss be shocked? Because Nigerians are so used to talking at the back. I don't come and do what? Talking what? In front. You're supposed to be sure. I told someone in my office to do it one time. Because the person yelled at her and she didn't like it. So she went to meet the person. And the person was, a, was much senior than her. And she told the person. And the person said, actually, I'm very sorry about it. I'm very sorry I yelled at you. And I won't do it again. And they became very, very good friends. I mean, like, very good friends. Because sometimes people don't know how badly behaved they are. I ask my people all the time. I, mean, I tell them my people all the time. I said, please, if I annoy you, tell me. I love to say sorry. Sorry, because you keep telling me, ah, I'm so sorry. Let me tell you, I don't want to be the emperor with no clothes. We're in here. We're walking around. I don't want to be the emperor with. I want to be the emperor that people can say, okay, ah, uh, Biola, sorry, something is. I, I, I want to know. Because I also do my own self assessment. 
you know, try and understand who your boss is. Manage your boss. You don't have to like your boss all the time. If you like your boss, it's a bonus. You know, it's, a, it's, it's nice. But you must manage your boss. Your boss must see you as dependable. They must see you as reliable. They must see you as having good character. If your boss, if you go and leave and your boss doesn't miss you, yeah, just find another job. You go and resign. Resign. Because you are not valuable. The guy doesn't care about you. So find a way to engage with your boss in a way that adds value to them. Right? It is very important. Then also, I think what is also important is what kind of organization do you work in? There are a lot of people that... I've, I've changed jobs quite a lot. I think I've changed jobs like five or six times. I've worked in different organizations for different reasons. Not because I like to jump around, but I just have had to change jobs. And at various organizations, there are various things that are important. I've worked in First Bank. So you can imagine it's very, um, you know, hierarchical. You know, everybody likes their ma, their sa, uncle and auntie. We don't profitable to all. Don't go to the place and they say, oh, we are on a first name basis and you now call the oldest man in the place, Jumo Keba <laughs> Oni. Oh, Vek you can't, you can't go to an office and they say, oh, we operate a flat name, flat, flat structure. Everybody's on first name basis, is Jumo No. Understand your organization. Understand your organization. You can be in an organization where they have a lot of young people there. It's also a different kind of vibe. You can then, you know, jump around. Understand your organization. Is the organization looking for people that are creative or innovative? Decide if you want to be there. If you're an innovative person and you're in First Bank, you'll be stifled. You will be stifled because First Bank is not creative. The elephant is moving. Oh, Fedeko, Fo. Elephants, you need Latin Fo. Osha, Osha, Amara, she, Chu, 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 Mari. Do you understand? Oh, need there. Oh, need Latin fly. Necessary. But if you go to Access Bank, Oh boy, you have to fly you. But I want to not back. You better fly. If you don't fly, guess what? They will fly you out. Ah, they will fly you out. You must know the kind of organization that you work in. It's very important. Otherwise, you would find that you're not, you will always struggle. You can't, you won't be able to add value to the organization. And why are these things important? Because then it helps you understand your boss. And it helps you decide the kind of boss you want to be. Not all bosses are bad. If you change people, if you, if, you, if you sit down and you look at your boss, you will find something. You might even change your boss. You know, some people, there are people that change their, there are some bosses that you meet, and before you came, they were just, ah. And then you leave and you're like, ah, would that you help me go? And you don't know. It's not always the boss changing you. You must change your words. You must, it's both ways. Because you see, they can't see themselves. So you must help you must work at it. It's very, very critical. And let's stop being emotional and petty. I know people have stories. They'll tell me my boss. I, I, I'm sure if we say answer, question and answer, I will get 10,000 boss comments. My, even my, okay, let me not say it, but people close to me tell me examples of what their bosses do. You know, okay, let, me, let me tell my own personal example. So I was in a meeting and I didn't want to sleep because it was boring. And my boss, um, and I was just, you know, just playing with my fingers. I didn't, I didn't want to, I, I didn't want to, so I was trying to distract myself. So when I left the meeting, my boss called me. This recent age, not when I was young, this recent age. I said, Yella, you were in that meeting, you know, I didn't think your behavior was very CEO-like, you know, you're just playing with your fingers, I'm not quite happy with that. You know, I was like, dude, really? I'm like, who did I tell this guy? I just said, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's all. He was confused. I said, I said, you know, I said, no, no, don't, don't say sorry. I said, that's okay. I take your feedback on board. I appreciate what you're saying. It makes sense. Thank you for sharing it with me. And I just said, I'm sorry. I may not have liked it because I thought it was unnecessary, but he had a valid point. If he is seeing me like that, who else has seen me and decided not to tell me? Is that, do you understand where I'm coming from? But I can get angry and say, this man, Seth, he's too, he's too petty. He's, he's within my right to say he's petty, is he not? Is it, it sounds petty, Abby. You can't, you can't understand why it's an issue. But it was an issue to him. But you see, sometimes people see us and we don't see ourselves. So when they give us feedback, is it, is it for us to think that they are victimizing me? Do you understand where I'm coming from? But I just said, I'm so sorry. 
And I take what you say as feedback. So whenever I'm in a meeting now, I watch what I do. I'm, I compose myself. Am I, am I, am I communicating? I wasn't on the phone, no. Don't get, I wasn't, I mean, I don't, I'm not on the phone in meetings. So, you know, I've gone past that level. I wasn't on the phone. I wasn't taking calls. I'm talking about, I'm playing, I'm doing something in my own fingers, my hands, and he's upset. But that tells you that even at our level or my level, I still get feedback that I don't like. But I don't, I'm not upset with my boss. I say him again, ah, hi, how you doing? Oh, let's, you know, whatever, wanna, we're eating suya or whatever. We'll still eat suya. I won't get angry with my boss. But some of us, with our bosses, we, we are doing them as if they are husband and wife. So when they are angry, little we are angry. When they are sad, little we are sad. Oga, you will not live long in life. If your boss is upset with you, move on very quickly. Don't even let it linger. Move on quickly. Don't even let it germinate. It's what is not personal, right? We need to fix our behavior. We need to fix our mentality. We need to fix, fix our perspective. We need to fix our emotions. It's very important. I'm going to touch a bit on women and emotions. You see, unfortunately for women, I'm going to go into men and women issues. So all the men, sorry. Women, I'm, this is you people who giving you um, female management 101. A woman is judged harshly for doing the same thing a man does. Do you know that? If I get angry in my office, Ah, Bella is so emotional. In fact, when they give me feedback, Bella is very emotional when she talks, when she talks. Meanwhile, a man does the same thing. Oh, he's a very authoritative person, you know, he's very assertive. It's the same behavior we've exhibited though. But because he's a woman, ah, she's so emotional. Because he's a man, oh, he's authoritative. Women, please, drop emotions. Don't go to work and be carrying emotions around. I'm, very, I'm being very honest with you. You won't, you won't go far. Drop the emotions at work. If you want to show emotions, go to it and go and cry. Wash your face. Come back and just throw it again. It'll be alright. Keep it moving. Don't let anybody come and see any... In fact, don't, re- resist the urge. Don't be emotional. In fact, if you have an issue with someone, don't start with, I am angry with you. Never, ever... Every t- if, 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 if everything I've said, you won't... I mean, if everything I've said, you won't take anything away from it. What I'm telling you now, gospel... Never, ever, as a woman, never, ever, ever in your life, start a comment or an email with, I am upset or I am angry. Banish it from your dictionary. Never in your life, in your life, never, ever, never, never, ever. You know why? What the person is reading is that you lack control. Fact. They just see you lack control, you lack emotional intelligence, you don't have sense. If somebody annoys you at work and you are so angry, you know what you should start with? I like thank you. Me and me, thank you. Oh, thank you very much for so, so, and so, and so. The decision, that, the decision that was taken, I don't even personalize it, that was taken would affect the company by X, Y, and Z percent. Move your emotions to the numbers. Don't put your emotions in, I am angry with you. Ain't nobody care if you're angry. Nobody cares if you're angry. So start by saying the actions that were taken will affect the company by X, Y, Z. Nobody likes their company to be affected. So any MD you take that memo to, once they read that it affected the company by X, Y, Z percent, what it pass? In fact, they will carry the matter on their head and say, ah, we must resolve it. Because you have now made the issue about the company, not about yourself. A man can get away with saying, I am angry. But a woman cannot. Let us be guided. We are two, it's different. You know, you must know the rules. Decide if you want to play. But the rules are the rules. You must surely understand it. So those are the rules though. Don't bring emotions. You, 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 can be, you, can be, you can be passionate. You can be kind. Please be kind. Don't be, don't be Samanja at work as a woman. When they see they'll flee. No. You can be kind. But when it comes to dealing with work issues, you must, even if you're doing it and you're talking about the job, you must do it with empathy and, and, and niceness. When a woman is not nice at work, ah, yeah, Jenny. When a man is not nice at work, ah, okay, Bruni. No. It's not, it's the same people, it's the same behavior. But you don't get away with it. So because of that, we need to take a step back sometimes and react with less emotions and we put our best foot forward. It's very important. 
I think my time is up. I, th- I think I took five minutes extra. But listen, I'm going to round up by saying, I would rather hire a person that has a good character and no skills than a person that has good skills and no character. I have a recent example. I'll show you my sister in the car. If it happened to me, it's someone I hired. And um, I just got a call. I was on, at home on Saturday evening. And I got a call from her. And she doesn't really call me. But I told my sister, I said, this girl is calling me. I said, I know her very well. She was on leave. I said, this person is likely asking for more time, and more time off work or something dodgy is about to happen. So she calls me and says, oh, by the way, I'm resigning. I'm resigning. I said, okay, that's fine. I know you're not in country. What's, what's going on? So am I seeing you on Monday? And she said, oh, I'm not coming on Monday at all. So she resigned from where she was. Wow. And I said to her, I said, I, 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 the conversation was less than a minute. I just dropped the phone. I was like, there's no point in us conversing for that. It's a waste of my time and your time. Because I can't, I can't accept your salary. I can't promote you. I can't demote you. I can't query you. I can't memo you. You're in Canada. <laughs> Say go be. Because I was just very shocked. So I went to work and she said, oh, well, she told somebody that, oh, when I spoke to my boss, my boss was fine. I said, don't confuse being shocked with being fine. I said, the two are different. I said, I was shocked because I just thought, this is bad behavior. Secondly, I also thought to myself, I can't beat you. Thirdly, I know that we may never, ever, ever in life. So I put that, ah, don't come and do I'm a party. Ah, I need party. I can't party. Ah, party. Ah, party. Ah, party. Ah, it's true. Let's, how many are party? I'm a party. 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 I'm you do it again. Because if anyone, you will behave that way again. And it will not work out for you. Right? And it just shows me that she just lacks character. She lacks a total character. Now, imagine if you try that in Nigeria. They're just waiting for you in Nigeria. I don't even go to Canada. I just stay in Nigeria. I just resign and don't come to work. They're just waiting for you. you know, Nigeria is a very small country. Oh, I need reference. What <laughs> part one mark by the end, it's like, oh God, we're waiting for you. You know, but we have to be very careful. You know, your Bible say, oh million, oh million. The more I'm growing up, it's as if everybody, every time I meet someone new, by the time they say who they are, I can tell you 10 people that I know that know them. It's so weird. I'm like, oh, ah, that's my friend. Oh, that's my friend. Oh, my friend's son. Oh, my friend's son. It's such a small world. You may not... You may not um, kill someone. You, you, may, you may be able to go to Canada and escape it all. But you see, that thing will follow you. So in, in conclusion, guys, we've talked on many things. I'll try, and, I'll try and recap it. Your behavior is key. Start a behavior that aligns with who you want to be. Don't be confused. It will follow you. We said the first thing was assess who you are. No, the first thing I said was, sorry, decide who you want to be. Have an image of the person that you want to look like. Secondly, I said, fix the gap that you have from who you are and who you want to be. Right? Then I went into the office and I said, be an entrepreneur. Right? See the office as yours. I went to the fourth thing and I said, have mentors. I didn't talk about sponsors, but we can talk about it later. But I said, have mentors in your office or around you that you want to be like and you want to emulate. And I then talked about the final thing was manage your boss. Because it is important. You need to manage people. Free fact. I, I, one more minute, guys, and I'm out. Free fact. The, people don't hire me anymore for, for my skills. I'm not. Nobody hires me for stockbroking. Nobody cares. They, it's assumed I'm a fellow. I can stockbroke. Or I can broke a stock. Whatever. I'm a stockbroker. You know what they hire me for? My experience. Experience with people. Experience with resources. Experience with, 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 with situations, with transformation, with change. And managing people, trust me, it's at the heart of anything you will do. Because they say, if you want to go, if you want to go somewhere, if, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with what? With people. You cannot grow without people. So if you alienate people around you, young, old, big, small, you will not go far. 
In fact, somebody shared something. He said, Agbalagba to ba bu omode. On pada wa ba omode yen. You know why? Who are those that run companies now? Femi. Who? If you look at all the entrepreneurs in Nigeria, 360 Kobo, um, Paga, blah, blah, blah. When they were in school, but when, they, when they finished school, maybe I had just I had entered university. I'm not even kidding you. They're young people. So it means that you're going to be going to young people and saying, I want to walk. Yes or no? So if you insult his friend, what will he do to you? Will you get the walk? Oh, he gets the share. So be nice and not, not let me let me let me rephrase the word. Don't be nice. Be a consummate professional to the young, to the old, to your peers, to your organization. Do not cut corners. In a world where people are corrupt, stand out. Be that example. Do not be corrupt. Do not compromise your value. Do not compromise your morals. It is possible. You can do it without compromising. And be, I'm, I'm not corrupt. I like to say this. I think so. I don't, I'm not corrupt. And there are many people that are like me. We're not that strange. You can do it without being corrupt. Thank you very much. It's been a very, very wonderful, very insightful two topics. I would have easily have asked um, which of the two speakers we preferred, but it would be like asking a child to pick between his mother and his father. It would be utterly impossible. Because now, let me tell you what me have learned. I don't know about you. Me, I'll tell you something me have learned. You know me, when I came in the morning then, I was telling some of you, uh-huh, you want to go and claim 5,000. You have heard now, oh, uh-huh. those my people on that side, you can see, you can do it and not be corrupt. I've learned that one today. That means I'm on the right path. So we will not be putting the money in our pocket. That's very good. I've also learned, see, whether or not you like it, if you like vest, if you like don't vex. Everybody that came to the office, we all came to work, to collect salary and go home. So if you carry your own problem on your head, mm, if you don't deliver, it's your own. My brother has said, it is you that will do yourself by yourself. So if you do yourself right, it goes right. And if you do yourself left, it will go left. Put your hands together for yourself as well. And we'd like to appreciate um, the two speakers. And there was something that was very that was very important that happened in the course of this second topic. It touched me, you know. And I had an idea. It not come from, you know, the inside. Okay, so maybe it's from, like, my belly. Uh So that's very deep. You start. For all you care, the person sitting right next to you might have the information that you need for that next breakthrough. See one of my brothers now. Eh? MD wants to collect his number. I want to come and market myself now. So that everybody will know. <laughs> you see, me, I have opportunity. I'm carrying microphone. You people, you are listening. So don't vex. <laughs> Time and chance, everything. This is my own, you understand. So, <laughs> before I market myself, where am I going? Networking is key. I can remember one day, I saw a friend we've not seen for a while. A while waiting for another friend. And I jokingly just said to the person, one way, ah. Oh boy, you be doctor. What are you doing in uh, you you want to go and write insurance exam? And the other lady said, Oh, she's in insurance. Uh-huh, okay. Like play, like play. I just said to her that how far now? They not go sack your head of IT. I define work. And it was like a joke. And she said to me, They've been recruiting, they've been interviewing for head of IT for the past I don't know, maybe they've even found somebody. And this was a friend. We would talk every day. We would just, but I never thought of, you know, speaking up. So I just jokingly said to her, it was a Sunday evening. So I said, ah, you know, when you get to the office tomorrow, go and tell your HR you have candidates. Guess what? I went for the interview on a Wednesday. Wednesday after that Sunday. It was that simple. So what am I saying? We are brothers, we are sisters in the Lord. There are quite many of us seated here today. We have fantastic businesses. We have fantastic ideas. We have a lot of things we can do. Even if we don't own our own businesses, we're a brand on our own. There's so much we can do. So how many of us knows the person sitting to... Sorry. Uh-huh. 
our right. Sorry, right. <laughs> How many of us know right? <laughs> what the person does. So I'm going to give us a few minutes to try to get to know what we all do. You know, um, it would be very nice if we can at least meet five new people that do things that may be very essential to what we do. So, um, so let me tell you what me I'm doing right now. I'm trying. I'm trying to run a business. I'm trying to start a new business. At the same time, I am gainfully employed. But at the same time, I am looking for a new job. Uh-huh. So, like that. Uh-huh. Every... Uh-huh. Oh my goodness. You, you think it's a joke. Okay. So I started by marketing myself. Uh-huh. So if you have new job, see, I can cook, I can clean, I can type, I can read, I can sweep. So, um, so that it's not very awkward. I will employ us. We can stand up. We can walk around. Because this session, in fact, is also stylishly linked to our break. Ah, you have a job for me now. Ah, see, now it's passing. No breakthrough is passing. <laughs> They're already calling me. <laughs> so we're going to use this session. Yeah, this, this, this brief 15, 20 minutes. Okay, praise the Lord. I started by saying this. I will confirm you are all Christians. Praise the Lord. Okay, so we are Christians. Let's rise to our feet. Let's rise, let's rise. Let's not be shy. Let's not be shy. So, in this session, you are going to walk around. I'm sure we already know ourselves, but, you know, it's one big happy family. We are one body in Christ. So, we can get to meet people. So, hi. Um, talk to people. Just talk to people. Don't forget that I know you. Get to know them. Get to know people. So, people are baking cake. Some people are sewing clothes. Uh -uh. Some people are printing business cards. What's wrong with all of you? We are all here together. We must blow. 2019 is our year. We are not waiting to 2020. We are blowing now. Uh -uh. What are the high to so personally, I have my own. I can see some people. See, is find out how they can help you, who they know. You know that job I told you I went for? I didn't get the job. Later, I found out that the person that was doing my insurance in Leadway is best friends with the CEO of that other insurance company. I could have gotten it, but I didn't know. Let's talk to each other. So while we are at it, there are drinks at the back. You can get water at the back. You can get some snacks at the back. So that it's more like a tea break, water break, kind of snack break something. Uh -huh. All mixed together. By the way, I'm now an MCU. I've discovered new talent too.
So I have an artist in the house. Some people are taking their talking a step further. They are using PR firm, MC PR firm. So I have a brother here. What's your name again? His name is Bio by name. He's an artist. He can draw his sketches. Very brilliant gentleman. So in case you need to do maybe a storybook for your organization to show how you started, how you started, how far you've come, where you are going, they can string together a storyline for you and make that happen. So this brother is here. You can make sure you see him. Okay. Thank you very much.